A former FBI agent affirms the fact that the US government has access to all of your communications. That includes text messages, emails, and yes, even phone calls. Not just phone records, we're talking actual recorded phone messages. The FBI and other federal agencies secretly work with telecommunication firms to record your every call for later use. Former FBI counterterrorism agent Tim Clemente said, Welcome to America. All of that stuff is being captured as we speak whether we know it, like it or not. Documents were released on the highly controversial online whistleblower site WikiLeaks, claiming that the US has listened in on current president of France, Francois Hollande. It also shows that the US has spied on the two previous presidents, Nicolas Sarkozy and Jacques Chirac, over a six-year period. France, a country that is considered an old ally of the United States, famously opposed the American-led invasion of Iraq in 2003. Ever since, there have been several revelations of eavesdropping on diplomatic communications. Once the documents were posted online, Obama had to do damage control and call France's president himself and reiterate his promise to not spy on their country anymore. New drone technology has given the US the ability to take out high-ranking enemy officials with pinpoint accuracy. But drones aren't always as precise as the government claims them to be. In April of this year, two hostages were killed accidentally in a United States drone strike targeting an Al-Qaeda militant base. The drones made several hits on different targeted Pakistani bases over a three-week period. During one of the strikes, 73-year-old hostage and U.S. citizen Warren Weinstein was accidentally killed. His death wasn't revealed by the U.S. government for months, partly because it took a long long investigation to actually confirm it. Since the controversial drone program's inception in 2002, a total of 10 US citizens were killed by accident. A senior research scientist by the name of Boyd Bushman passed away in August of 2014. But before he died, he recorded what is known as his deathbed confession of the existence of aliens. While working for an advanced technologies company called Lockheed Martin, Mr. Bushman claimed to have taken part in reverse engineering flying saucer technology. During the video confession, he held up photos of what he says are actual aliens. He described them as long-fingered and very friendly. Bushman claimed that there are American citizens right now in Area 51 who are working on UFOs 24 hours a day. In the past, other employees of Lockheed Martin have made claims of technology harvested from alien UFOs, including stealth bomber tech and laser-guided missiles. At one point in time, the American government tried mind control techniques and used everyday average citizens as test subjects. The project was codenamed Project MK Ultra and was implemented by the CIA in 1953. Project MK Ultra used lots of different methods to manipulate people's mental states. Some of the highly illegal methods included administration of drugs like LSD, sensory deprivation, isolation, verbal and sexual abuse as well as various forms of torture. Experiments were often conducted without the subject's knowledge or consent. The experiments lasted until 1973, when most of the documents surrounding the project were destroyed. 44 colleges, 15 pharmaceutical companies, 12 hospitals, and 3 prisons were all known to be facilitating participants in the illegal experiments. In 1981, unclassified documents showed that the American government once dropped 930,000 mosquitoes infected with yellow fever over Georgia and Florida as test weapons. In the document, the experiments were evaluations of entomological warfare. They wanted to see how many people could be killed with lethally infected bugs and how much it would cost to fund the attacks. In total, about 1 million female mosquitoes were bred for testing. There were other cities that were bug bombed, and those programs went under the names Operation Big Itch and Operation Dropkick. Documents released in 1997 show the U.S. government wanted to commit acts of violence against American citizens and blame it on Cuba. The program was dubbed Operation Northwoods. The plan proposed hijackings and bombings, 
followed by the introduction of phony evidence that would implicate the Cuban government. The attacks would happen on American soil in cities like Miami and Orlando. The government would then step in and blame Cuba for the attacks, and therefore have an excuse to go in and overthrow the communist leadership. Operation Northwoods was authorized by the Joint Chiefs of Staff, but then rejected by President John F. Kennedy. In 2003, the CIA wanted to undermine the authority of Saddam Hussein by making a fake gay sex tape. They believed that shooting a fake video of Saddam having sexual relations with a teenage boy might destabilize his regime during the US-led invasion. One former CIA official described how the plan would be executed, stating, It would look like it was taken by a hidden camera, very grainy, like it was a secret videotaping of a sex session. Although the plan never saw the light of day, it made it all the way up to the top brass of the military before being rejected. The presumed idea was to shock the Iraqi people into rising up against their leaders and thus make the invasion a lot easier. 